Th thank you very much, Francesca. Um, uh, so, um, actually, yes, I will be talking about different algorithms in a website for virus evolution. Uh, here are my disclosures. Uh, and as an introduction, I would like to remind you that um, since the COVID-19 pandemic, there have been really huge number, increasing number of websites that uh, aim to study virus evolution across time, not only for HIV, but of course for SARS-CoV-2, and that had been uh, then enlarged to other emerging viruses. So basically, in this talk, I will not be able to give a comprehensive uh, data on all available websites because it's huge, and we have talked about that with Francesca earlier. But um, I will try to focus on uh, some aspects of HIV, on SARS-CoV-2, and a little bit on, on RSV, with giving an overview of the most friendly websites uh, that uh, could allow to determine genotype, subtype, or lineage according to viruses, identify resistance-associated uh, substitution, use algorithms for interpretation of resistance, and finally, analyze genetic diversity across time, across countries, lo across locations. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry if you have developed a website that I, ha I didn't mention. Uh, <laughs> so let's start with HIV. I think you all know that there are several websites that define HIV nomenclature, groups, subtypes. And this morning we, called, we talked also about CRF, circulating recombinate, uh, recombination forms. And probably one of the most popular websites is the Los Alamos website that gives an overview on these different HIV-1 and HIV-2 group. And in, uh, in this Los Alamos, you will also find uh, this table here showing uh, the name of all available CRF that have been assigned so far. Uh, as mentioned this morning, more than 130 uh, CRF have been um, assigned. You, you could have find the subtypes of uh, recombinations and, of course, the genome map. And if you click on the genome map, you would have the, the details of the recombination breakpoints. And also, you could have also the number of sequences that, you, that are available in, the, in, the, um, in CBI databases. So in a practical point of view, when you generate sequencing, you, you sequences, you first need to HIV sub subtype these sequences. And I hear, again, several websites that you could use to subtype your virus. And as, has, as mentioned this morning, the, these webs websites do not give always the same uh, subtype, so it's quite difficult for some instance, like the, the, this morning we talked about A6, uh, that maybe some discrepancies between uh, between uh, websites, and so you need to be careful of that. Um, so the three or four most uh, famous websites are the Los Alamos, the NCBI genotyping tool, the Stanford Rega HIV subtyping tool, and the Comet HIV1 and, and HIV2 tools, and it's quite easy to use, actually. You just need to paste your sequences, your faster sequences, and you get your, your subtype. Again, you can have some discrepancies that you need to discuss afterwards. Regarding resistance of HIV, here again, you have several algorithms for the interpretation of HIV genotypic drug resistance information. The most famous are the Stanford algorithm, the French INRS algorithm, and also the HIV grade uh, algorithm. So it's quite easy to use. You just have a table of rules that indicates which mutations and the impact of each mutation in targeted genes and their impact on, on, on your trials with uh, two kinds of information, usually uh, mutations that induce high level of resistance and mutations that induce intermediate level of resistance. And in a practical point of view, uh, when you generate your sequence, you need to paste them on available platforms. And here again, you have several uh, possibilities. Either you, you, are, um, you are rich and you can have uh, commercial uh, so softwares, and then you could use a smart gene, for instance, or virus call. Um, using these uh, platforms, you can have uh, either paste your fastest sequence or your fast Q sequence if you, use, if you use next generation sequencing. Um, and the advantage of these uh, softwares is that you have your, the history of your patient sequences, which can be, of course, important in terms of um, interpre interpreting your, your resistance. But there are also free online platforms, uh, uh, specifically the Stanford, for instance, and the HIV Grade. So I'm just showing you here an example of HIV Grade. If you paste your sequence on HIV Grade, you can have this kind of uh, information. You could compare, actually, all uh, three algorithms. There's also the Rega algorithm that you could also use, but the Rega algorithm has not been recently updated. Last update was in 2017 and did not, did not include last generation uh, antiretrovirals. 
So um, also in some conditions, uh, if the patient has been sequenced a long time ago in another hospital and you don't have his fastest sequence, but you do know which mutation has been discovered at that time, it, you could use this program of uh, uh, Stanford where you could easily enter the mutations and then re in uh, RT, protease, or integrase, and then reanalyze uh, the, the impact of this mutation according to last version of algorithms. So, so this could be helpful in some, in some situations. Another uh, tool that can be helpful uh, to analyze minor case species, particularly if you use next generation sequencing, is geno2pheno, ngs.geno2pheno.org. Um, in using this website, you could define pre-established cutoff to visualize minority variants, as you can see here in, this, in these circles. Um, the problem with this website, however, is that integrase inhibitors are not included. As you can see, there are only nucleoside analog, non nuc and protease inhibitors that are shown in the circle. But however, it is an easy to use and adapted to any next generation uh, sequencing platform. So in this example, you can see that uh, if you use the cutoff of 10%, you all uh, the virus is sensitive, but if you use the cutoff of 2%, you can see that the virus is resistant to some nucleoside analog, um, including 3DC. And of course, you can have the details of mutation. In this case, M184V mutation was found uh, at a 2% cutoff, but was not found at 10%. So this, this kind of tool actually uh, is important to know because this is uh, it can provide a means of exploring resistance at multiple prevalence levels, and you can choose your, 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 your percentage of uh, your cutoff. And in the future, that may be a, a helpful tool to research the impact of minority variants for clinical decision, as we discussed this morning. Again, Integrase is not, however, uh, integrated in this platform. And I want also to say that other platforms that are not available online, but you may, uh, you, you may pay for them, are, uh, also give this kind of information. So some words about SARS-CoV-2. I think you all know that for SARS-CoV-2, there have been major databases, particularly the Geyser databases, which has been initially actually developed to study influenza sequences. And today, Geyser harbors more than 15 million SARS-CoV-2 sequences. And in addition, it has integrated other viruses, including RSV and monkeypox analysis. And also, we tend to forget that NCBI has also, it is it's still a major database also for SARS-CoV-2. It, uh, it harbors 2 million SARS-CoV-2 sequences, and NCBI has had the advantage of integrating uh, data with literature and the BLAST database. So if we look in the GuyZ platform, the GuyZ research tool, it's quite easy to use. It's, uh, here you have the, sort of the collection of um, over 15 million sequences, you, you can uh, choose the location, you can choose the collection period, you can choose which variant you would like to, to focus on, and importantly, you could also look for amino acid substitution to a specific uh, antiretroviral, to a specific, um, of resistance to a specific antiviral. For instance, here uh, I showed uh, the, the, an example of L50F, which uh, um, induces resistance to uh, Nermatrelvir, um, to Paxlovid. So you can see here, for instance, if you just enter this mutation, you would find 5,000 uh, 5, viruses that harbor these mutations out of the 15 million sequences. This kind of tool give you, uh, allow you to monitor global emergence of SARS-CoV-2 resistance mutations, for instance. The problem with GuyZ is that the download button does not always work. We don't know really why, but there are some concerns about how, how to use GuyZ. I think we can discuss that, but anyway. Even if you cannot always download sequences, analysis of uh, um, across time and countries is still possible using this tool. It's probably easier to use uh, uh, the NCBI. So the NCBI website is basically quite the same. You, ha you, ha you need to select a specific criteria. And then, uh, for instance, here I um, selected the, one of the last emerging variant. And then you just have to download all these sequences to align sequences. It's really quite easy to do. Of course, if you have 1,000 and 10,000 sequences, it's be, it'll be more, e more difficult to, to download. But however, there is no the same problem that we might um, have with Gazette. And also, whether NCBI or Geyser, there are several online tools that have been made available 
to study variants, to study mutations, to study viral genetic analysis. And one of the most friendly, I would say, or most famous, it's Nextrain, which actually incorporates daily updated SARS-CoV-2 uh, sub sample data set. Uh, Nextrain does not take all sequences because it, it, it's too huge. So it subsample sequences depending on regions and depending on time so, so that you could have the phylogeny uh, according to, uh, to variants across time and also um, in several regions of the world. Nextrain has also a lot of other platforms that could, you could be used. And one of the interesting platform is that you could use this tool called the SARS-CoV-2 variant forecast that actually predicts the next variant to dominate in a specific region uh, across time. So this could be also a helpful tool in a, in a specific country. Again, here uh, looking for uh, some research criteria. It's quite simple. You, you can look for location, variants, mutations, collection date to have uh, this phylogenetic tree and uh, the corresponding regions in the world. So, for instance, I take here the example of one immune escape mutation in spike amino acid substitution at position 452 in spike. And um, just in clicking by this and in specific uh, box, you could have all uh, the wild type uh, uh, 452 mutation in R, mutation in Q or M, um, in uh, across time and across countries. This is quite easy to use. Again, the problem maybe with Nextrain is it is not it's not comprehensive. You don't have all the data. It's just a subsampled. Uh, around 4,000 sequences are available, but it gives quite well a good picture of what uh, is circulating. And as, as for HIV, Stanford has also developed an algorithm for SARS-CoV-2 drug resistance analysis that is presented as follow. So there are several boxes here. There is one box for susceptibility summaries that actually takes into con in consideration uh, the monoclonal um, escape according to variant, but also a convalescent plasma. We talked about that this morning, convalescent plasma impact according to variants. There are also algorithm of resistance, not per variant, but but per mutations uh, f um, and the, their impact on monoclonal antibodies, also their impact on protease inhibitors and RNA-dependent RNA polymerase inhibitors as well. And the French NIRS is also working actually on algorithm for respiratory viruses, drug resistance, including RSV and um, in, in influenza that should be available soon. So if I take the example of uh, the Stanford and what, how it shows uh, this kind of algorithm, there is this phenotypic table showing the fold reduced neutralizing susceptibility to all monoclonal antibodies that are available, commercially available monoclonal antibodies, according to uh, the different classes of monoclonal antibodies, and um, the impact of each variant, uh, of each sublineage sub of variant uh, toward these commercial uh, monoclonal antibodies. So this is quite easy to use. When it's dark blue, it means it's resistance. When it's light blue, it means it's intermediate, and it, uh, absence of color means it's sensitive. And as you know, for instance, the last uh, variants, emerging variants, XBB variants, uh, are resistant to maybe all, uh, all monoclonal antibodies, except maybe for Cetrovibab. We talked about that uh, earlier this morning. But I, mean, I would like also to emphasize the fact that in the next coming month, we will have next generation uh, monoclonal antibodies, hopefully. So similarly, you could also fetch not for the impact of a specific variant, but on mutations and the impact of, on mutation in spike to all uh, monoclonal antibodies. This is the, the left part of the, um, the figure. Um, here again, colors um, indicate the level of resistance, and in, you will have also the global prevalence of each mutation according uh, to, the, um, uh, to the databases. Similarly, you have also a protease, major protease mutation to Paxlovid, Nermatrelvir, and the, the more recent Encitrelvir, uh, and the, the impact of each mutation on viral fitness and on the prevalence of uh, the, the, the mutation in databases. And similarly, for NSP12, we have uh, mutations and their impact to uh, Remdesivir. 
So here, in a practical point of view, when you generate SARS-CoV-2 full-length sequences, you could uh, paste either the FASTA sequence in the uh, Stanford website or uh, your FASTQ sequence, or if you only have the mutations, you can also input the mutations to have the interpretation. And I think that this website is really easy to use because you would have the result, uh, the sequence, a sequence summary that will give you information on the uh, lineage. It will map all the mutation according to the Wuhan virus uh, back, background, that it's quite, quite easy uh, to, to, to use this information. And also it will give you the impact of this mutation on resistance to uh, monoclonal antibodies. And finally, there are also new tools that are being developed to analyze emerging viruses, including dengue, Ebola, uh, West Nile virus, Zika virus, um, for instance, monkeypox and RSV. So I took the example of RSV, and here uh, um, these examples are shown in nextstrain.org. And if you uh, take RSV, for instance, you could fetch for amino acids, uh, emergence of amino acid substitution that may impact resistance. For example, here I took the example of a long-acting monoclonal antibody candidate, subtabumab. And as you can see here, there is this emergence of mutation that you could easily see uh, since 2010, and then that expanded was uh, became the dominant since 2015. And this mutation actually confers with another mutation that's next to it confers high level of resistance to these monoclonal antibodies that is no no further developed. So if we can use these tools, um, if the company used these tools prior to developing the the monoclonal antibody, it would have been uh, probably uh, more um, efficacious. Um, and also, in a practical point of view, if uh, for RSV or for other emerging viruses, if you sequence the virus, the full-length virus, you could use one program of an strain called NextClade that allow you to assign the clade that allow you to detect mutations in different uh, viral proteins and give you sequence quality check. So it's quite easy to use. You just have to drop your sequence in a specific area here, and then you would, you would find um, information on the full length genome uh, SARS, um, RSV sequence. So here I'm giving you just an example of what of uh, full length sequences we, we generated in the lab of RSV a few weeks ago. So it's, um, it's quite easy to analyze. You have the sequence name here, the assigned clade according to the sequence, the full length sequence, the full length genome coverage, and also, uh, you, could also you could either look for the full length genome or selectively um, take one gene. So here, for instance, I selected gene F, and then it uh, shows you which amino acid substitutions are found in F uh, for these uh, samples. And then you, you could look, of course, at the impact of this mutation uh, on monoclonal antibodies in the future, for instance. And of course, you could do also phylogenetic tree on your sequences. So this is all I wanted to show you today. I'm sorry, I, I, I had to make some choices. I did not, uh, it was not comprehensive, but I'll be happy to take some questions. Thank you.